hier ist Lacrima. Welcome back to my art channel. I thought it might be interesting to make a video about my art journey and show some of my artworks you haven't seen before. Are you ready? Then let's go! 2006 to 2015, the holy years of randomness. Before I became a digital artist by end of 2016, my art went through a lot of phases. And I would describe all of them as mainly anime inspired. Cause animes were the main reason for me to start and I also read a lot of mangas back then. Ever since then I mostly used lined or scraped paper I can't tell you why, but it made me feel more comfortable somehow. <laughs> After my first and long magical girl falls, I drew anything out of my imagination. Honestly, I think it was good for my creativity, cause I thought a lot about character designs and creatures. Not saying it was a good choice not to make any studies at all these years. So the only thing I felt ready to recreate was a painting of a kitten I saw in an art book. I'm pretty sure the flowers weren't part of it, but I wanted some more uh, genic stuff around. As you can see I drew really random things. When I was 12 or 13 I started drawing my first gothic girls and I kept that for a very long time. I still love them and hope for more opportunities to do some more again. Even when I discovered fairy and antro art, a lot of them had some gothic vibes within. I made really bad experience uh, with a fairy community because I got in touch with really toxic people. So I made a cut and started drawing uh, humanoid characters again. Um, did I mention that I tried out to draw in Microsoft Paint with a mouse a few times? <laughs> Let's go to the year 2016, a new beginning. By end of 2016 I started my digital art journey. It was a really frustrating year and I made a video about some of the struggles I had. I will link it in the info box. However, drawing on a tablet, especially line art, felt very strange to me. So I kept drawing my lines in the traditional way and colored everything in Photoshop. I was still lazy, so I came up with the amazing idea to place images for the background and manipulated them. Looks super epic, I know! I joined the DeviantArt community and got really excited to learn more. I started collecting references and practicing on proportions and environments on tablet and paper. As you can see, even though I just started to take art more serious that year, my artworks began to look so much better. I also took a deeper look on other artists' works and searched for tutorials. This piece was one of my first uh, digital paintings. I worked hard on the different textures by looking at those step-by-step -step images. For those who only know my new artworks, you may have noticed now that my love for fantasy has always been there. In 2016 I created my first original characters and started writing on my own fantasy story. Sadly my jobs kept me too uh, busy so I stopped writing and I spent my time with drawing, videos and social media. But who knows, maybe one day I will have more time to write again. 2017 The Contest Obsession I found out that many artists on DeviantArt were holding their own small contests and since I never felt good enough for official contests, it was a great chance to start small. 
My first entries were total disasters though, <coughs> but I didn't give up. I tried to join as many competitions as possible. It also happened that I made two or three entries and I also offered art prizes for contests I wasn't able to join. Sometimes I created artworks of the same character but in different art styles. And sometimes I couldn't decide what character to choose, so I drew more than one. I started reading their bios and included more of their personalities or background stories in my artworks. Most of times I got specific sceneries and visions about them in my head and I tried to visualize them. And what I like most about original characters is that they can come alive in your head and stimulate your creativity. I understood that it won't only help me to try my best with my art and find new inspirations, but also to get my art seen by more people. I think at that time I also learned a lot about advertising myself and building up a community. I met so many amazing artists just by taking part in those challenges and I love to look at all the other fantastic entries from other artists. It's so fascinating to see the same character in so many different interpretations and styles. Every piece tells another story. As I entered more contests, I got out of my comfort zone little by little and worked more on concepts and environment. It made pretty much more sense to take more energy and effort into one piece instead of creating as many as possible. Well, honestly, I ended up doing both because I wanted to win so hard. Oh, and here are my entries that finally helped me to win my first contest. I still know how much I was in love with this host characters. I think I made two or three entries for her, but this one she liked the most. Her characters were fandom OCs for My Hero Academia, if I remember right, and this hero name was Madame Muse and she had a giant plush lion with three heads. Really cool design. And this one brought me place number two or three in another contest. I drew the host main character getting rescued from a sloth and animal comrade, cause there were phrases in the character's bio that sticked in my mind. Like when the hero said that the girl and animal were keeping him alive. I wanted something strong to express how they literally save him from getting swallowed. It's not a masterpiece, <laughs> but I think the meaning behind was its strength. Actually, the artist who hosted the contest said that there was exactly a scene like this in her book she never told anyone about. <laughs> this was an amazing experience for both of us, I think. It was also the year I worked on my own clothes species called Pandroids. That's how their concept sheet looked like. <laughs> yeah, so rough. Uh, I reworked them in 2018 and spent so much more time in their design concept and background story. Honestly, I scribbled and wrote down so many more ideas last Christmas but haven't found the time to keep uh, visualizing them. My main character is actually the mascot of my clothes species. That's why she has this unusual look with all the cyborg and animal traits. <laughs> you can find more of her and my species on DeviantArt. I also have a group for them. In 2017 I also got my first commissions. This shabby snake boy was the very first paid artwork I made. It was only for a few points, not even real money, but hey, everyone starts small. <laughs> and please look at this masterpiece of a commission sheet. Oh my gosh, I had so offered to follow back commissioning me. 
All in one it was a fun time, but since DeviantArt messed up so hard over years, especially since Eclipse, I slowed down my activity a lot. I need to rethink what to do with my species and designs. Well, whatever. In the end I think Arthur Kant has built up my wish to become an original artist and rather draw my own or other people's characters than only fan arts. 2018. The Improvement. This year started with art trades and art prizes I offered. My very first artwork was the poetry of a girl with glowing horns. The saturation is so awful and somehow I thought it was a good choice. Also look at this one's face. I had this fast when I thought that high saturations and magical lights would improve everything. I was also still obsessed with joining contests and practicing my skills. But I learned to take focus on single drawings and grew a bigger collection of inspirations and poses. I spent more time on one artwork than I was used to and I gained ways more patience than before. In the end I joined less competitions but learned more by stop rushing on my art. This was my entry for a contest by the amazing Lena Mo Art. I drew her elfin girl along with a deer and used more vibrant colors. My entry made place number two or three. I was really proud she liked it cause she's such a brilliant artist. Though it was one of my first artworks I was proud about, I was never satisfied about the deer's face and flowers, but I tried to offer the best I was able to give them. Oh, and I still like this one. It was one of the first times I tried out to draw everything in grayscale first before coloring it afterwards. It was for a contest hazard by the wonderful Lucina Waterbell. Her character, Shebel, has such a beautiful design. In 2018, I also worked even more on my background scenarios and emotions like in this pieces. I got more paid commissions to work on even more complex ones like this. It was my first time drawing those dragons from different fandoms as well as a scenery like a destroyed city. It took me a month I guess and I was surprised about the outcome. I remember that Kanshin, that's the name of the amazing person who commissioned it and a lot of other artworks, believed more in me that I can do it than I believed in myself. He was also one of my first patrons and I want to take the chance to thank him once again and all my other supporters as well. I appreciate everyone who helped me growing as an artist and overcome my fears. Thank you for everything. Oh, and I don't want to miss to share two of my best artworks of that year. One was for an art trade and my very first experience of drawing a cave and crystals. The hands look a bit off, but hands and feet have never been my favorite parts to draw. And this one was a secret Santa gift I drew for a lovely artist named Akaneto. Her character Layla inspired me so much. If I don't get it wrong, she was kind of forest spirit. So I drew her along with a little fox. It was my first fox. And I think there were a lot of things I drew for the first time in that year and there are still a lot of things left to try out. 2019, the busy year. I held my own contest and my first draw this in a style challenge. So I had some art prizes to draw and advertising to do. These two art prizes I made are still one of my favorite artworks. I gave this girl a more doll inspired look cause I thought it would suit her personality and design concept well. Blurring out single parts is still a technique I like to use. It gives more depth and is an easy way to make portraits look less static. Akihika won my OC contest on DeviantArt and I absolutely love her entry. 
I still use it sometimes as profile image. She wanted me to draw Jay Hong for her. You know, a character from the webcomic Lookism. I think I got used to draw mats thanks to opportunities like that. And I got commissioned to draw even more. I finally learned how to blend characters with background colors more. I'm far away from mastering it, but I keep up learning. I tried to draw more environment and atmosphere. My artworks got more and more detailed and complicated. But don't think it was easy for me to create them. I also feel a lot to fail. <laughs> but more and more people trusted in me. Even when I said I can't make promises and apologize up front, they wanted me to try. And I did. I'm actually not sure who of us were more happy, the customers or myself. I couldn't be more happy about all the lovely people I met and who decided to work with me together. I think that's the main reason why I was able to find motivation. All the love and support for me and my art. So please, keep up supporting and encouraging each other. It's so important. And now. Half of the year has passed and I already finished so many commissions and art prizes. I'd say 2020 will be my year of commissions and challenges. I started my first 20 art style challenge and only got four more styles left to beat it. I am looking forward to create a video about it once, but I already tried out different styles before when I worked on some art prizes for giveaways I hold on Twitter. For the second time I entered the official DeviantArt contest. I knew I had no chance, but it had been some time since I worked on the character design and the theme got me really hyped. Creating characters is so much fun, not only the design part, but also creating stories around them. I also enjoyed working on these two art studies cause for the first time I felt like my artworks came very close to the reference and I started learning faster. I'm really excited to see where my art will be by end of this year. Yet I'm looking forward to work on art studies, challenges and commissions. You can see speed arts and voiceovers of my current works on my channel. You may also find some older ones. Just check out my playlist. My final words I want to give on your way cause I learned that lesson my own. When you spend too much time thinking, you never gonna make it. Things won't change. Positive thinking leads to better results and it's always good to get connected with other artists. Be brave and never give up learning and trying hard. No matter how much you fear or doubt, don't let it get you. You'll be surprised to what you are able to achieve. Thank you really much for your time and support. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you want to be part of my art journey, please subscribe to my channel or follow me on my social media. You can always find my links in the description of my videos. If you want to see more videos like this, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm always open for suggestions. Stay safe and have a wonderful week.